Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is actually part of a YouTube hop and it is featuring some new products from Alex Siberia Designs. This is their uh, Underwater Wonders and then I'm also using this Treasured Tulip. I do have another game plan for this um, in another video but I'm actually just using the sentiments for it today. And we're going to be doing some stenciling watercolor backgrounds. Um, I realized it had been a really long time since I used my Distressed Oxides. And so I thought that that would be fun today, even though they are a bit muted. Um, you can still use muted colors. Summer is here. Ocean themes are here. Um, and so these are just a really like easy, fun way to kind of have some fun with the like the oxides that you have on hand, but you could also do this with distress inks or any inks that will react with water. So first technique first, <laughs> um, we are just putting down some color. I'm working on a glass mat. You can just work on any non-porous surface, um, and then I'm spritzing it with some water. And this particular design I want to be very light, a very light design. I wanted to see if I could pick up some of that extra color and kind of blot it on. That worked-ish. Um, mainly what I'm trying to do with the rag there is um, give myself a soft edge and this was a little bit softer than I wanted it to be so I'm just going to do the same thing again. So I'm just going to put down a couple of colors I used all the colors I showed you except for the seedless preserves. That is the one color that I didn't use. So this time around, I, again, I just spritzed it with my water bottle. I used a little bit less water this time. And so you can see um, on my watercolor paper that it is leaving kind of those um, little like splotchy marks. And so here I'm just going back in to kind of... Uh, blot up those edges and then this is supposed to be really soft. I just want a little bit of color. Once I let it dry completely I'm going to put this onto my stamp wheel to hold my stencil in place. This stencil is uh, new from the release as well. What is it? It swirls. Something swirls. What is that? I'm going to find it. I'm going to tell you. Seaside swirls. And then here, I'm just using some ink blending tools. You could use brushes, um, but I'm going back in over the stencil with the same inks that I already used. And I'm using a super light hand and just kind of like a twisting motion, just to almost like pounce color in between there. I'm not trying to get color outside of my watercolor area, though it's okay if you do. But I'm just trying to make it just slightly darker um, than the watercolor background. And then because I truly do want this to look like it is all a watercolor design, once I'm done putting my color on, um, I think the only one we have left to go is the Salty Ocean. Once I'm done putting that color on, I am going to lightly spritz over the top of it um, so that that way it kind of reacts with the water. I'm going to I'm going to talk about the video hop and then I'm going to talk about <laughs> and then I'm going to give you a tip about this card. So there is a giveaway um, with this video hop uh, and there's another hop on the stop uh, or another stop on the hop. So there's a video after mine is what I'm trying to say. So make sure that you hop along with all of them for your chances to win. I believe they're giving away three twenty five dollar gift cards um, and they're actually pounds. 25 pound gift cards because you know the, the Alex Siberia is across the pond um but just a really great giveaway so make sure you comment below like and follow all that jazz um so I did spritz this but I spritzed it very lightly because you don't want a ton of water and then I like the spatters if you don't like spatters you can totally leave that off um it's not gonna make it or break it I just like a messier look and then I just left this here to dry once it was dry I went ahead and removed my stencil we can see that beautiful stencil pattern in the background and then because I like some shine I'm gonna go in and um spatter on some perfect pearls into my background which will add it uh just a little bit more shine to it you could also do this while it is wet but if you do it while it's wet it's not going to leave spatters it's going to bloom out into all the watercolor which is also really beautiful just a different look so here we've got a couple of layers going on and this is like a really fun easy way to get another look out of your stencil and then I'm just going to set this aside to dry and move on to the next one. For the next one, this is probably the most subtle of the techniques. We're going to be starting the same way. We're going to be putting down ink um, onto our glass mat. 
and then dipping our, our watercolor paper into it. I did not say I'm using Canson um, Monteval watercolor paper. And then I'm just going to dip this right in. Um, I, it did not have enough. I didn't have enough water. Um, but I'm going to dry this down to keep the speckles that I do like. And then I'm just going to keep dipping it in until I am happy with the result that I'm getting. Um, so you can spray and dip and dip and spray until you are happy with your end result. I wanted there to be um, a bit more of a solid color, like, so I decided I was just going to go in direct to the paper. And here you can see I'm, I'm not adding a ton of color. I'm literally just using the side of the oxide pad to do little lines. And then once I have uh, all the colors put down, I'm going to spray the watercolor paper um, to get that ink moving, and that's going to give me a much more saturated look. I'm going to kind of, you know, flip it back and forth um, to get that moving, and then I'm going to dry it down. Once I'm happy with how it is looking, I'm going to, um, oh, here I wasn't happy. That's why I wanted more pink and purple. Um, and so I'm doing it one more time, dipping it in now that I have a pretty good base going on with the oxides because they do have pigment ink properties one color will sit on top of another which means lighter colors will sit on top of darker colors so you can do this and still it will still look okay because they will lay on top of each other now i decided i was going to preserve my ink over here on the right that's why i haven't cleaned it up yet because i'm going to use it for my spatters here what we're doing is almost like a bleaching technique. I'm going in with a damp rag. You don't want it to be sopping wet. Just a damp rag. And I'm going to um, just kind of pat it over. You could do this also with a baby wipe or a wet paper towel. You don't have to have a rag. Um, but it does leave a really cool texture. I do have to tell you that. Um, and this is going to pick up some of that pigment. And where the stencil is in place, it will leave it darker. This is definitely more subtle than the previous one where we added more ink on top of it. Um, but I still think that it's super pretty. And if you're going for something more subtle, I think that this is a great option. Again, more splatters. That's what you see me doing here. And I did not do the Perfect Pearls yet. I'm going to do it after it is completely dry because I do like to keep those um, actual spatters. So here you can see much more subtle design. And honestly, at the end, like the end card, I don't even know that you can see it really well because we have the little characters that are on top. The third one, which is kind of like the most foolproof way to make sure your pattern is seen, um, is the same thing. So we're we're um, putting our colors down, we are spritzing them, we're dipping our paper in. And can you see right here how you can already see the pattern? Let me tell you what happened. I originally went in and started doing the pouncing with Versamark before I did the color and I was like, silly girl, you need color in the background. You can't just let it be blank. Um, and so then I sprayed it and I dipped it back in. Now it doesn't hold through multiple dippings, but it did through that first one. So I think that would be interesting. Um, in another video, maybe I will try that or you can try that. Um, pouncing over your uh, watercolor paper with Versamark uh, and then adding color to it and seeing how that works. But like I said, it only held up through the first dip. So now here the background is dry and I am going in, I'm using a uh, paper pouncer from Picket Fence and I am pouncing my embossing ink. I did kind of let it trail off towards the top and you can use whatever embossing powder you like. I am using a, the Sparkle embossing powder from Hero Arts. This is a clear embossing powder with lots of glitters in it. And I have to tell you, in real life, it's beautiful on this background. Like, you know, when you think about the ocean um, or like the waters, you know, one of the big things you think of is like the water glittering, like it glitters in the sun. It does. Um, and so this really holds up with the, the glitters. And I am not um, completely heat embossing things up towards the top, just the portion that's over the watercolor. And then I'm kind of letting it just be organic up there. I'm going to go in with a dry brush and brush off anything that did not heat emboss. 
so I can keep that organic edge. And then I went back in and my intention was to dip it back in to add the color. But honestly, this didn't really work that well. So even though I was trying to like force it into the paper to get the non-embossed parts to be a bit darker, it just it just wasn't really happening. So I did end up going in with a paintbrush and just kind of adding it um, right over there. The heat embossed portion will resist it, uh, protecting our original color. And then the portions that are not heat embossed, that are just the actual watercolor paper, will pick up darker pigments in that... Uh, what do we call that? Um, that kind of pile of color we already had. Um, I didn't really have any of the peacock feathers or the picked raspberry left. So I decided to put those down so I could paint in those colors. And then I did go back through with all of the colors and do some spatters up towards the top. And then, um, that is all three techniques for the background. So you, like I said, you can do this for a bolder color with distress inks or any, you know, reactive inks that you have. Um, but I used oxides just to be a bit more subtle. Uh, when I was part of the YouTube hop, this is me putting the perfect pearls on these two backgrounds, by the way. When the color, the cards that I did for the YouTube hop, which I will have a video at some point showing how I did those. Um, I also used the underwater wonders for that as well. Um, here we're just looking at, those are just the, the three backgrounds that we have going on. Um, and now we're going to do some stamping. Are these guys not so cute? Like, they're just adorable. The one, the little fish with the underbite, he looks like a little piranha. Adorable. Anyway, um, the other cards that I did for the Instagram hop, which was on Saturday, uh, were much brighter. They were, like, bright teals and blues and um, then the characters were colored much brighter colors, which is more traditional to my style. But I think every once in a while, it's fun to kind of mix up your color combinations. And so after I stamped these guys, and I did stamp them in, um, what is it, Intense Black Ink from Hero Arts, because it's safe for Copa coloring, I am going to color these guys a bit more muted, a bit... Um, a bit darker, if you will, to match the backgrounds because those oxides are a bit more subdued. Uh, and here I am, I'm using three color blends for all of them. Their images are a little bit more fine line, uh, so it doesn't give you as much of a buffer around the edge like a bold black outline would do. Um, but that's okay, just go through and take your time. Um, if for some reason you're, you know, you get out of the lines, that's what the colorless blender is for. Also, I'm going to be cutting out um, these with their coordinating die cuts, so I'm not overly worried about that. Um, and then I did almost all of them two different colors. So they have, um, like some of the fish have like little bellies that like the lines drawn to show like where their belly starts. Um, the octopus has like the little under tentacles. A lot of them have spots on them. And so almost all of my fishes are two different colors, which I think is really fun. Um, gives them a bit more, I mean, they're obviously adorable, but gives them a bit more whimsy. Um, and I chose colors that matched my oxides. Um, because I just, you know, obviously you want your, your images to go with your background. And originally when I had done these backgrounds, I started um, trying to use some brighter, like brightly colored images, and I just did not like them together. It just wasn't something, they didn't go. Uh, so I just switched it up and I changed my technique and that was fine. That worked out really well. Um, so yeah, so that's that. I am, um, we talked about the video hop, which is super exciting. This is their first one ever. I'm, I'm just absolutely flattered they would ask me to participate. Um, and then what, what else has been happening? I, I do have, um, I've brought my, my, uh, my runny nose to the party today. I did try as long as I could to not do the voiceover to see if it would get any better. But alas, it has not, and this is, we're all just kind of stuck with it. So as soon as I am done with this voiceover, I will be going to the sleeps, <laughs> I will be going to bed, and um, hopefully when I wake up tomorrow, the the uh, the allergies will be in hand, um, 
I don't even know if it's allergies. We're in Northeast Ohio, so we're kind of in a spot where our our air is not that great um, because of the Canadian wildfires, which, by the way, goes without being like goes without saying. To please keep those people in your prayers. Um, but then also, it hasn't rained here for days and days and days. I mean, like. I think I think I remember telling you guys that I was part of this step bet challenge and um that was a 5 week no 6 week challenge and today was the last day we made it by the way hallelujah praise jesus we made it and there there was some rough rough days to get those steps in um but we did make it and I remember thinking at the beginning of the challenge like what am I going to do on the days that it rained let me tell you guys it never rained today was the first day that we had rain and it didn't come until about six o'clock this evening so there's been no rain to like wash the pollens away um or any of the other you know irritants um because it's been so dry here so it's a much needed rain um thankfully uh, it did rain today and it's supposed to rain a couple of days this week so hopefully it will hopefully it will get better um but yeah, so, so I did, I finished my step at challenge. It was, I was so mad at myself. You know how sometimes things happen and you just can't let it go. I'm a person who tries not to, like, I really try hard. I, I know that that's a part of my personality for me to kind of take root, uh, with something and then just kind of keep replaying it over and over in my head. So I have to be, make a conscious choice to let things go. And, um, I have been throughout this entire challenge. I try to knock out my what they call power days, which are like the most active days. I try to knock those out at the beginning of the week so that they're done and the rest of the week is just smooth sailing. And then I get in my active days and I know it's harder for me to get my steps in on the weekend. So I try to get my active days um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday I can have off because Sunday is also my day to sleep in. And so that's my normal game plan. And that's been treating me really, really well. This is the entirety of the challenge. Um, and this week, do you know what happened to me? I was so mad about it. So I got a power day on Monday. On Tuesday, um, it was just kind of a little bit wild. I, you guys, I know I've recently told you that I've been backed up on my things because the baby was sick. And... Um, Nathan's over it, by the way. I know I told you guys before that he had it. He is over it. So we're, we're, we're moving on from the hand, foot and mouth. Thank God. Um, but so it was, it was just a, a rough week struggling. So Tuesday, um, Caitlin was just, she was just irritable, you know, she didn't feel good and it was what it was. And so toward the end of the evening, um, I had looked at my watch and I was within like 500 steps of my goal. So I was like, okay, I'm good. Um, I should just be able to like do the rest of my evening things and meet my goal. And then she had a meltdown about, um, getting out of her high chair and it was bath time and she was having a meltdown in the tub, which is so like, oh, it was a lot. It was a lot, a lot. And then she had to be put to bed and all of that jazz. And then once she was put to bed, uh, my husband had come home. And so he and I were just kind of catching up, sitting on the couch. And then I went to bed and I didn't pay any more attention to how many steps I had taken. And I realized the next morning that I missed the goal by a hundred steps. One hundred steps I missed it by. Let's talk about the card. So here I'm comparing my colors to my background and I realize that the blue green and the violet that I've chose are a little bit more desaturated than what I would like. And so I'm just gonna do some color glazing. I'm not recoloring all of this. So I'm just gonna go in with a bit of a brighter violet and a brighter blue green and just go right over those colors. The shading will be maintained because we've already laid that down. Uh, we're just going to be changing like the tone of the color and just making it a bit brighter. And it matches the background so much, so much better. Um, so don't be afraid. Like if you, if you started out with something that you're like, oh, I thought this was going to work and then it didn't, don't be afraid to see if you can glaze it with another color and make it work without having to recolor the entire thing. So that is the violet. This is the blue green. I think the violet was a little bit more effective than the blue green, but it did get the job done in general. And so I'm going to take it as a win and move on with my life. 
So anyway, yeah, I was devastated that I missed it by 100 steps, which meant the one free day I had in the week was gone and I had to be active through Sunday. So today was the last day and we made it. The challenge is over. We ended up losing 30 people throughout the challenge, uh, but I wasn't one of them and that was the point. <laughs> so um, yeah, so now I'm going to go through and I'm going to use their, isn't, aren't their dyes adorable? They're teal. They're teal. I love that. Um, but anyway, so I'm cutting out my sentiments and my little characters, and then we're going to start building the cards. Um, I knew before I stamped my guys which guys were going to go with which card. I kind of had laid out the stamps, so I knew how many to stamp. And there's that one fish. See that guy in the top corner? He's the only fish that is facing left. So he made an appearance on every single card because in order to balance it, I needed a fish facing left. <laughs> so here I've decided that I was going to trim them down just to get some different looks. So this is the one that is the most subtle of the designs. And I, I tried to leave a good portion of the background, um, but I did trim it down some to create a, I don't even know, like a, a vertical kind of look. And then this one I trimmed down just to be a slightly smaller panel. I really liked the, the background and how you could see all the waves pretty distinctly. And so I wanted to keep as much of that as possible. And then the card where we did the embossing, I didn't trim it down at all. I left it just the way that it was. So that's another thing, you know, when you're going through and making these panels, don't be afraid to trim them down if you think that they'll look better a different way. So for this one that I did not trim at all, I am just going to mount it to my card base with some liquid adhesive and then put all my little guys on it. I did not pop up any of my characters. I chose to pop up my panels instead for the other two cards. But if you wanted to pop them up, you totally could and that would be adorable, whether you're using foam adhesive or just cutting a couple of the extra dies and popping them up. Normally, I am a person who colors in my white outlines, um, but because the backgrounds are so forgiving, they're like messy watercolors, there is still white mixed in there. And so it just didn't really feel like it was necessary to color in those outlines like it would be, you know, with a scene card or where the white is right up against a solid color. It felt like there was enough going on in the background that the white was kind of mixed in and it didn't really bother me. But of course, you guys, you know, if that's something you have a different type of background or, you know, the white is glaring and sticking out to you, by all means, feel free to color them, you know, those edges with your markers until you're, you're happy with them. So I tried to show you the putting together of all the cards, um, just in case you had any questions. And like I said, these two uh, panels are going to be popped up on foam. Here, let me just show you. So this was just a little bit, a little bit wider than I wanted. And I used Fisker scissors for pretty much everything. But my foam tape sticks to them like crazy. And so I bought these no stick, these little gray ones, these, these no stick scissors from Spellbinders. Um, and they're really great. They're really very good. Uh, which is, I pretty much only use them for cutting my foam adhesive, but honestly, that's what I bought them for. So I'm fine with that. Here is a shining example of why I have to put liquid adhesive on the back of my foam, and that is because I need to be able to pick that panel back up 16 times before I can line it <laughs> up and have it be straight. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. And then here, this one, again, I'm going to glue all my little guys on before I do my panel just so I don't have to figure out the arrangement yet again. And then you guys know that I cannot... Um, I recently did, did, yeah, I did the video for that one. There's so many cards that I've made that I haven't done videos for. Don't worry. I play them too. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, but I recently did a video for Trinity stamps and they have, they sent me some gemstones. You guys, I cannot stop using them. Oh, they're so good. So pretty. Um, so I've been really drawn to the sea glass ones, uh, late, lately, but the, this one for, uh, this card, I actually used the milk glass embellishment mix and, uh, it is beautiful as well. So once I get this down where I want it, um, with the, again, the assist from the liquid glue, thank you very much, then I am going to pull out my little gemstones and put those where I want them. 
I will spare you the arranging of the gemstones on all three cards once I get the gemstones where I want them to be. I on this one this one card here, then I will <laughs> I will show you how I glue them down, which um is with the crystal katana, which I totally love. And this is making my life so much easier with these gemstones. I don't know why it took me so long to buy one. I, I honestly do not know. Um, but anyway, so once I get those down, then the next thing that I'm going to do, because you know we never have enough glitter, is I'm going to use one of the clear glitter pens. Um, I use Wink of Stella uh, clear and well as tonic. Um, the, gl the clear one, I use them interchangeably. They're both great. And then I'm going to further add some glitter because I have a problem um, to like the little spots in their fins using some Stardust stickles. And then that is, that's it. That Those are all the cards. So um, don't forget that this, this closes down. I believe it is June. I think you can comment for the giveaway until June 18th. And then they'll announce a winner on their blog on the 19th. So um, you're, you're moving on to the next stop on the hop. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.